Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I'm going to talk you through the fitting process of making this Named Patterns Selena top. Now I posted on Instagram a few weeks ago about fitting and the fact that I've been trying to learn more and more about fitting garments to get the best fit possible and you guys were really interested in it so I thought I would maybe start to share some more with you on YouTube about my personal journey of learning to fit. Now as I just mentioned this top is the Selena top from the named Breaking the Pattern book. So this is the book, I'm sure lots of you already have this and this pattern is the Selena pattern. This is the dress version, which has just been made in this gorgeous lilac sample. And I've basically made the top version, but with the sleeves. The sample of the top is made with no sleeves, but what I love about these patterns in this book is that you can mix and match between all the different variations. The fabric that I've chosen to use is this lovely bottle green. Um, it's called the Sorrento Viscose Crepe from Fabric Godmother. I believe it's a fabric that they stock really regularly, so I'll link it below if they still have it. And um, it's, it's lovely fabric. It's relatively lightweight, but has a really good drape to it, so it kind of behaves a bit more like a heavier fabric, but it is a lovely floaty fabric too. And I'm a real fan of this color. I think it's one of the signature elements of this pattern is it's got this really cute little bow at the front here um, that pulls these the sort of front in and gives it some fit. And then it's also got matching bows on the wrists. Now, I'll tell you ahead of time, before we get to the end of this video, that these are already driving me absolutely bonkers. I think they look like very cute, just down at my wrists. But I mean, they dangle and everything. I don't know if I'm just not very dexterous, but I find it really hard to tie the bows myself. And you know, I'm a strong, independent woman. I don't wanna have to ask my husband to tie my bows on my wrists. So I think I've already decided that I'm gonna probably take these off and probably just put some elastic around the wrists and maybe use these bits to create like a little popper cuff or something just to like, I don't really like the look of having like elast gathered elastic just as it is, but I could use these to like cover it up somehow. But anyway, that's just a very quick fire review of this pattern, but I love this neckline. I think this is really nice. And I really like that it's got a seam down the front. I just think that's a nice bit of detail. And yeah, as you can see from the sample photos that it's very much designed to have this sort of extra fabric here that then gets pulled into the waist. There. And it's got an open-ended zip at the back. If you look really closely, you'll see that mine is actually a blue zip because I didn't have a green one. Um, but I don't really mind. I think it works. I don't really want to have to go and buy one, particularly not as we're in lockdown in the UK at the moment as I'm filming this. So let's talk about fitting. So I've made a bit of a plan of how I'm going to attack this video and what I want to do is kind of talk you through the whole process and show you how I came to make this size, tell you about the pattern adjustments I've made. So to give you an idea of where this video is going, first I'm going to talk you through which size I chose to make and how I came about making that choice. Then I'm going to show you the twirl that I made then I'll talk you through the adjustments that I decided that I needed to make based on that twirl and kind of the results of how that twirl looked on me. Then I'm going to show you the pattern adjustments that I then made on the pattern pieces. And then I'm going to show you, well, you've already seen the final product, but I'll sum it up at the end. So keep watching if you're interested in hearing about the fitting process of this garment. Step number one is choosing which size to make. Now, this might sound really straightforward and I've never given it much thought in the past either. I've just, you know, taken my bust, waist and hip measurements, compared them with the pattern and, yeah, gone for the ones that seem to match my measurement the closest. But there is a lot more to it than that. Now, I learned about this when I attended the By Hand London um, Bodice Fitting Masterclass at the new Craft House at the beginning of this year before coronavirus and everything hit. And it was so fascinating to learn basically about the high bust and the function of the high bust when you are choosing which size to make. Now, I'll very briefly talk you through it, how it works for me, but I don't want to get into it too in depth because I'm not yet an expert in any of this. And I would like to point you to this resource, 
which is, it might be looking a bit bright here, but it's the Bodice Fitting Companion by By Hand London, and this is brilliant. This actually came um, as part of the course that I did, but it is on the By Hand London website as a PDF download that you can purchase, and this talks you through everything about your high bust, your full bust, your dressmaker's cup size, so if anything I say now leaves you feeling a bit confused, this is a really good resource to refer to. So, first things first, measure your high bust. Now the high bust is the bit that's right up underneath your armpits. And for me, so you'd measure it by yeah, get, holding your arms down and measuring right up underneath your armpits like that. And then your bust is across the fullest part of your, of your breast and that's your full bust measurement. So, for me, my high bust measurement is 31 and a half inches. Now, when choosing a pattern, I've always in the past focused on my bust measurement, but actually, if you want to make sure that the pattern is going to fit your shoulders really well, you're best to choose your pattern size based on your high bust measurement, and then you can do a small bust adjustment or a full bust adjustment, if necessary, to make it fit across your bust. Basically, what Elisa Lex taught me is that it's much easier to adjust um, a pattern based on your bust than it is to choose a pattern for your bust and adjust the shoulders. It's better to get the shoulders right and then adjust the rest. So, how do you know what the full bust measurement is on a pattern? Because as we know, most patterns don't give the full bust, um, the high bust measurement. Most patterns will give you the bust, waist and hip measurement as a minimum. Sometimes, like in this named breaking the cloth breaking the pattern book, they also give things like back length, arm length, waist to hip, and inseam. So that's really helpful when a pattern gives you more measurements. But I don't think I've ever seen a pattern that gives you the high bust measurement. But you can calculate it yourself. And this is just the bit of magic that Elisa Lex taught me in that class that has just changed the game for me. So this is the bit that gets a bit confusing, so remember to refer to this if you're unsure. But most patterns, not all, but a lot of patterns are drafted for a dressmaker's B cup. Your dressmaker's cup size is completely distinct and different to your bra cup size. So please do not think that your bra cup size dictates your dressmaker's cup size, they're not related at all. The dressmaker's cup size is all about the difference between your high bust measurement and your full bust measurement. So, for a pattern that's been drafted to a dressmaker's B cup, there should be a two inch difference between your high bust measurement and your full bust measurement, with your high bust being the smaller measurement. So basically, in a nutshell, what that means is if your full bust is more than two inches bigger than your high bust, you're probably going to need to do a full bust adjustment. If, like me, your full bust is less than two inches bigger than your high bust, you're probably going to need to do a small bust adjustment. But this video is not about bust adjustments necessarily, so that's a whole other topic that maybe we'll talk about another time, but as I said, there are loads of really good resources to teach you about full bust and small bust adjustments. But Basically, what the important point of information there is, is that for patterns that are drafted to a B cup, which these ones are, the high bust measurement will be two inches smaller than the bust measurement. So, uh, what you can literally do is go into your pattern and look at where it says the bust measurement, and I've actually written in pencil above the bust measurements what I've calculated to be the high bust measurement. So for example, in here we've got bust measurement 33 inches. 33 inches minus two inches is 31 inches. So for that particular size, I've literally written in pencil what the high bust measurement is. And you could do that across all the sizes in the pattern, just so you've got all the high bust measurements for reference. But just remember the formula of bust measurement minus two inches equals high bust measurement. 
So that means that I th once I then have written down what all the high bust measurements are, I can compare my high bust measurement with the high bust measurements of the pattern. So my high bust measurement is 31 and a half inches. And in this book, the high bust measurement for a size two is 31 inches. Now, because as you can see, this um, pattern is relatively like loose fitting, I'm not too worried about that half an inch. So that is why I chose to make a size two. Whereas if I'd have done it based just on my bust measurement, so my there's not much difference between my bust and high bust measurements because I don't have very big breasts and I've got, you know, I my back gets broader quite quickly from my bust, I probably would have made the size one and then it would have been too small on my shoulders. So that is why this is so important because it's actually shown me that no, I don't need to make a size one, I need to make a size two because my high bust measurement matches. So that's how I decided to make a size two in this garment. I based it purely on my high bust measurement. Now that I've decided that I'm a size two, I can go ahead and make a twirl. Now, once you learn more about the relationship between your high and full bust measurements and what that means in terms of bust adjustments, you could actually go ahead and make a preemptive bust adjustment. But I, this time, decided that I just wanted to go straight in to make a twirl because I wasn't really sure how these folds of fabric were going to behave. Um, and yet yeah, this was just a bit more of an unusual bodice. So I went straight for making a twirl. Now, I have two lots of twirling fabric that I keep on hand. I have a big old 30 meter roll of calico that I bought, I think I bought it from Sew Essential, I'll link it below if it's still available, and I have, I use that for more structured garments because calico is quite stiff and has quite a good body. And then I also have a roll of white fabric that I use for twirling um, more drapey items and that actually is leftover fabric from my wedding tablecloths, I bought it from Dawson Mill Fabrics is that what it's called? Um, on Ridley Road in London and I just said to him what can I use that's cheap and cheerful for my tablecloths at my wedding and he gave me that and it's quite, it's not thin, it's quite thick but it's got drapes so that's what I use to twirl my drapey makes. So I cut out my, I traced off my pattern pieces, cut them out and then cut them out in my twirling fabric. The great thing about making a twirl is you don't need to worry too much about all the details, so I didn't bother with the facings I, or anything like that, I didn't bother with um, you know, zips, I didn't even bother to put both sleeves on because um, I didn't feel like I needed to. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and show you the results of my first twirl. Here we go, this is my first twirl. So as you can see I didn't bother to make the second sleeve because I didn't think I need to. I could tell that I thought it was going to sit in the right place on my shoulders so I didn't bother to waste fabric on making both sleeves. Um, and immediately I just was so glad that I made a twirl. So let me talk you through what I think is wrong with this and what I decided to change. So first things first, I think the really obvious thing is that it's just too big in the front here. Like I knew that if I left it like this, I would constantly be pulling it. I'd constantly be like trying to smooth these bits out. And I spent quite a bit of time kind of comparing the fit of this twirl with the images of the pattern in the book because I know that it is supposed to have this fullness here. Like this is part of the pattern. I didn't want to change the integrity of the actual pattern. I like the design, but I came to the conclusion that I just have too much here. Like look, it just, if I was to like move my arms around, then look. I mean partly it's because this fabric is a heavier weight than my end fabric and it is always best to try and use a similar as possible fabric as your end fabric, but I just decided that this was going to drive me nuts. So I just, I knew that I was going to need to do a small bust adjustment really, because of the fact that there's um, the difference between my high bust and my full bust is less than two inches, so that's what tells me I need to do a full bust adjustment. So I basically had a bit of a pinch of all this fabric and decided, um, kind of based on just what I thought in the moment really, I decided that I wanted to take two centimetres out of each side as a small bust adjustment. So that's change number one. Change number two is that I decided it was a bit short, so this is just 
based on the pattern how long the top would be straight out of the packet but as you can see it's sitting like I'm wearing a top underneath and it's not covering my waistband of my jeans and particularly once it would be hemmed because I haven't hemmed it as it's only a twirl I would just be at risk of flushing my tummy and not even for modesty or style also just for warmth I decided I wanted the top a bit longer so that I could yeah wear like I'm probably gonna end up wearing long sleeve tops underneath tucked in and I just wanted it to cover the waist of my trousers sufficiently so I wasn't worried about flushing my tummy all the time. So that's the second change. I actually decided that I was going to lengthen it by six centimetres and I'll show you how I did that. And then the last thing is the sleeve length. So if, as you can see here, I haven't hemmed the sleeves yet and I kind of decided that these would be, this is a good length for a sleeve for me if I hadn't like without hemming it, but obviously some length will be taken off in the hemming process. So I decided to add three centimetres to the length of the sleeves and particularly with like the bows, I kind of wanted there to be enough spare fabric to stick out across my wrist. Yeah, but I hope you can see like how worthwhile it is to make a twirl because if I hadn't have made a twirl, the final um, top would have come out looking like this and I'd have been really disappointed with it and I probably wouldn't have worn it. There we go, that's my little sales pitch for making a twirl. Side note, it's really hard to pin yourself in things when you're home alone, <laughs> which I am now, so I actually managed to get it on, I pinned it and then managed to wriggle it on over my head except for the top two pins. But that wouldn't have worked if this wasn't a loose fitting garment. So that's, yeah, the challenges of um, being home alone as a dressmaker and not having anyone to pin you in things. So next I'm going to show you how I translated these three adjustments onto my pattern pieces. Now I'm going to show you how I altered my pattern pieces to reflect the changes that I identified that I wanted to make based on the fit of my twirl. So I've got my three pattern pieces here that need to be amended. I've got my back bodice piece, my front bodice piece and my sleeve piece. So first I'm going to tell you about what I did to the back piece. So I wanted to make the bodice longer by six centimetres was what I estimated would be the right amount. Now, I actually didn't just want to add length into the middle of the bodice, which is one option I could have done. I actually just wanted to make the top longer to follow the shape of the dress pattern piece, because this pattern comes not only as a top, but also as a dress and a jumpsuit. So I placed my pattern piece over the original pattern pieces that came with the book, so the big A1 sheets of, of patterns with all the sizes on, and I attached a piece of scrap paper at the bottom, and I just traced an additional six centimetres worth of length following the line of the dress, and then I sort of curved it off at the bottom. So it was as simple as that to add the six centimetres to the bottom of the back bodice. Now I needed to make sure I did the same thing to the bodice top so that, that would, they would match up. So again, I laid this over the original um, pattern pages and I added an extra six centimetres worth of length at the bottom and just used a scrap piece of paper to do that and taped it down with sticky tape. Now the um, second alteration that I wanted to make was to make a small bust adjustment to take out two centimetres worth of volume on each side. So what I've done here, you can see my nice messy masking tape. I really like that about making adjustments so you can kind of see the scars of where you've cut and slashed pattern pieces apart. Now this um, tutorial is, or this video is not supposed to be a small bust adjustment tutorial. So again, I'm gonna refer you to the Bodice Fitting Companion by, by Han London, because what I did was follow the grown on sleeve small bust adjustment tutorial for how to make a small bust adjustment to this pattern piece. For any of you who know about um, small bust adjustments or bust adjustments, um, I'd actually only learnt how to do them on pattern pieces that have either a dart or princess seams in the past, and this has neither. So I use the grown on sleeve tutorial in this, and basically it involves cutting a line up from the bottom of the pattern piece to the apex, from the apex up to the shoulder seam, and then from the apex out to the side seam, and you basically create a, a pivot point in the middle, you cut up all of those lines and it allows you to migrate everything in by magic, but I'm not gonna go into detail on that now. 
And then the third and final adjustment was to make my sleeve pattern piece longer. And this was really simple. I used the lengthening and shortening line on my pattern piece. So I literally cut it open, spread the pattern pieces apart, put a scrap piece of paper behind and measured my three centimeters, stuck it down, trimmed it up. So those are what my new pattern pieces look like. And I was then able to use these to cut out my final fabric. Now, usually you would probably, if you've got a really special piece of fabric or if you're still not sure that these fit adjustments would be enough, then you would make another 12 and that would be sort of best practice. But I was pretty confident that these three pattern pieces would do the job. So I then went straight on to make my final garment in the final fabric. There you have it. And here is, as I showed you earlier, the final garment. So as you can see, the sleeves are longer and the sleeves now have a nice little bit of volume out round my wrist and aren't too short. Um, the bottom of the top now nicely covers the top of my jeans, so I'm not at risk of flushing any stomach. And there's just so much less excess fabric across my bust here. It now just sits so much more smoothly, which in my opinion is more similar to how the pattern intended. And I'll give you a final twirl. So there you have it. That was the process of fitting the named Selena top. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please do let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm hoping that you'll have found seeing my fitting process really helpful. Um, and if you did, then I can certainly do more of these kind of videos in the future. So let me know. Um, it'd be great to hear from you over on my Instagram as well. I'll put the link in the description box below. I'm at Lizzie underscore dot b <laughs> but i post a lot of dressmaking content over there as well and yeah i'll see you next time thanks again for watching bye